escaping the realm of darkness. The paranormal guys are on a quest to find the answers to the hard questions of where the normal meets the paranormal and the weird and where the natural meets the unnatural. So grab your holy water, call your mama, and get ready for the Paranormal Guys Podcast. Oh, hello, everybody. This is Neil with the Paranormal Guys Podcast, and this is my co-host, the amazing... What's your name, sir? I'm Scotty. Scotty Rorick. Yes, he is. Woo-hoo! We're back rocking it again for another week <laughs> we're rocking it and we're gonna be in about another week and a half you and i are going to be uh out somewhere we're gonna be having some fun uh this yeah. is our, we pre-record a lot of these episodes so when you're uh, hearing this, this has already been pre-recorded that's what we do that's how we roll that's how we get down because so, then, uh, because then neil can edit and then yeah. every time we don't record or anything we can then edit it out and then we look amazing amazing <laughs> So what's new with you, Scotty? I don't know. I, I was going to ask you because I, we were just in Broadhead again, and I was down with Diet, and she was telling me all about your your filming of the documentary for your big thing on the twenty sixth of yeah. October. October twenty sixth. Yeah, yeah, it's going to you know be what? great. But yeah, you filmed two nights already with um, Larry and Diet and you. Yeah, did you get a lot of stuff? Yeah. I, I, so I'm right now. I'm going through all the EVPs. Actually, I'm starting on Thursday. Uh, I'm going to be starting going through all the EVPs, if any. Uh, but that place always, always gives. That's a, that's the kind of place that gives, you know. It's amazing. It's an amazing place. Yeah, the Roth House we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be. And I told the ad that you guys got to be on the staircase. You got to film there because that's where I got the most stuff happened to me. Well, you know what we did is, Larry, we made sure that uh, the camera was down, our security camera was on that all night long. Oh, great. Good. We left that on there all night long. We did. So one part we're doing is we're doing this um, this one thing, this sep- sensory deprivation thing that I was doing. And it's a little bit different when I do. Uh, everybody does their own thing. What I do is my definition of sensory depriva- depriva- deprivation. <laughs> yeah, and that's I, Say that three times. Right? Say that. Right? <laughs> I can't even say it once, for God's <laughs> sake. Well, I don't know if you paid attention, but neither can I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. You didn't. <laughs> so what happens is we put on the eyes so you, the eyes so you can't see and inside right. the eyes though is a record i mean not a recorder but it's a bluetooth that's in there and i have pink noise going into her ears okay, okay. and then i have uh something to cover her eyes like i said and then i have it uh i use a range from the gun range i use those kind of earplugs on her right. the earmuffs on her so that she can't hear because those are the best ones to probably use then what i do is i wrap her up in a sheet and the reason why I wrap her up in a sheet, no is sheet, a sheet, yeah, <laughs> is so that she can't, so she can't move. Number one, and she can't say, "Hey, something touched me," or this and that, some blew against me, or anything. She's completely wrapped up. So if anything does touch her, that would be weird, right? You know, what I'm saying? no. Do touch you her. use do you use the um, red lights for the you know, or do you no. just use a blindfold? Just use a blindfold. I made sure she was completely blind. Uh, what do they call those? Bi- bilinear uh, lights or something like that. I forget what they're called. But I've never done it like, like that. Not to, not to knock it. It's just I haven't done it yet. You know, I, mm-hmm. I just have a different way of thinking about certain things. And everybody has their different way of thinking. She actually got some weird activity. And it's like I was hearing things inside the house. And at the same time, she's talking with her eyes blindfolded her ears completely deaf and only hearing the pink noise and halfway through the recording it's just weird how we're like talking and it i don't know it's like we're she's following my sentences and she can't even hear me right it's just weird it's it's always amazing when that happens that's really yeah it was it was quite weird um she got some uh very good uh things that happened there her and larry uh i'm excited uh when we start finally looking over all the evidence and so i tell everybody you know it's all about the evidence when you go to do these things you know yeah. but uh we are actually going to be doing that so since you brought it up uh i actually have diet renee psychic medium who is going to be there she's going to be conducting the seance I have just talked to dave schrader from the holzer files as well as paranormal 60 podcast uh, he is going to be the MC for the day. It's going to be October 26, 2024, the Rough House, Watsika, Illinois. 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be, for me, a very amazing day. Um, we are going to make you part of the experience. How you always watch the shows and this and that. Well, with Larry Eisler III, who's going to be filming it, we are going to make you, our customer, our valued customer, part of the experience. So you're going to be able to probably be on the video uh, inside the film, as well as you're also going to help in getting us evidence. One of the things is what we're going to be doing is when you're inside the house for your one hour, just so you know, Scotty, we are going to take people's recorders and send it to their email, the file to their email for them to discover. And if they hear anything, they're going to kick it back towards us. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. So it's it's a different kind of event, and it's on prime Halloween weekend. I just actually got off the phone with uh, the Peoria Ghostbusters, too. They're going to be out there. Uh, we're going to be doing it for St. Jude. Uh, we're going to be doing a charity for St. Jude out there. Let's collect some nice. money for the kids, you know. Um and we're going to have other speakers and we're going to and I'll have more details as we go along. So I'm really I'm really, really hyped. And I'm hoping Scotty's going to be there. I know he's got uh, already things going on at the zoo, but yeah. uh, we're, we're going yeah, to at the zoo right. doing doing Ghostbusters at the zoo. So, you know, yeah. like the area Ghostbusters are with you and I'll be in Madison doing stuff for the kids in Madison. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's get right to the news today. I will get you, my friend, my buddy, my pal, right? You're going to do the first uh, article today. All right. Hold on. The Paranormal Guys Weird News. What you got for us, Scotty? Well, I'm going to actually, I'm going to actually mix it up, mix it up. Get so crazy. I'm going to talk about um, replication uh, strengths in the paranormal. So we're going to talk about that. So um, a lot of times we all talk about um, being scientific and doing all that type of thing. But in science, you know, we have to you have to replicate. So the, the principle of replication, it's a fundamental concept, not just in psychology, but in all of science. And it should be applied to the field of the paranormal research. It refers to the idea that in order to verify the reliability and accuracy of a finding, the experiment or investigation must be repeatable with constant results. This means that if a paranormal investigator claims to have observed a ghost at a specific location using certain methods, at, offer you know other investigators should be able to replicate the methods under similar conditions and observe similar results. Which sure. I, I think that's that's probably the best way to do it. Because it's not about you just getting inform uh, stuff by yourself. It's trying to get it over and over and over and over again. I mean, because that builds a story. That builds, you know, what the spirit is trying to talk to us to. You know, so I, I think that I think that's a great thing. Because, you know, we talk about a lot of it is, you know, people go, well, let's investigate at night. Why? When did the activity happen in the house? You know, did, did the activity happen at two in the afternoon and you're investigating at three in the morning? The spirits are probably not there then. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so you need to you need to write down all the stuff you have. You know, what what is the weather like? Um, in context of ghost hunting, I'm going to read to continue reading the article. Uh -huh. The principle of replication involves repeating elements of an investigator under the same conditions to see if similar paranormal phenomena can be observed consistently. For example, if an investigator calls out asking for a spirit for its name and the response is heard either directly through ghost hunting device, the principle of replication would require that the investigator ask again and receive the same response, which I do all the time. Don't you do that anyway? A lot of times, yes. Because I will always, I will always like, I remember the guy's name, but I always say on the thing, I said, oh yeah, I forgot. What was your name again? Yeah. Boom, and then you give it again. And if it's the same name, then then you know. Yeah, you know, if you can get the same name again, then you know you're having intelligent uh, responses. Correct. You're having to talking. You know, um, you know, if if in certain activity like a shadow figure or an EVP is witnessed by a haunted location, re replicating the investigation or the vigil where the activity was witnessed can help determine whether these ob observations are coincidence. Or are they repeatable um, paranormal um, occurrences? Mm -hmm. um, 
If different teams using similar equipment under similar conditions can observe the same phenomena, this strengthens the case for the location being haunted. I'm just going to cut it there because I think that's probably the best thing to go with on this. But the more we could do, the more we can understand and more we can help each other with the investigations, the better. Right. Um, it, it's all about the trends that happen. Like if we get a right? constant trend uh, that happens at a certain location at a certain time and this and that, well, maybe something's really going on there. Maybe it's not just a random thing that happened. But if uh, one ghost team goes in there and we'll say at 2 o'clock in the morning, they all get this wailing of a girl. Right. Well, there's something either it's residual or maybe it is an intelligent haunting. Right. So then you have to then progress it to see if it's a because there's a fine line between each and every one of these hauntings, ladies and gentlemen. Very much so. Yeah, there's a very fine line between an intelligent and a residual and a poltergeist. So each and every one of these things you have to take your time with if you're really, really um, into that one certain place. So if you find a certain place that you can keep constantly going to, like I know I can go to the Roth house on any consistent basis right. if I wanted right. to. Uh, I can go there for like a whole week and I can start to really, really understand, is this intelligent? Is this a poltergeist? Is this a, a residual? Blah, blah, blah. But that's because you're there for that full time. Yeah, but I mean, I've tried it. I mean, there was this place I um, in, in Kentucky we did at the cemetery. We did a year to the date, uh, an investigation, the same a year later, exact same thing. And we got the same voice at the same time in the wow. same place. So that's why I brought this up tonight because there's a lot of this has happened to me that really kind of proves the fact that there are spirits there. Because if you get the same voice at the same time in the same place, you know, and and if you hear the two EVPs, they sound almost identical. I mean, right. they, yeah, you could tell it's the same voice. Right. No, no, no. And, yeah, and like uh, you go to certain places and if you like there's this one place called the Irish legend in the Chicagoland area where supposedly a little boy is supposedly down in the basement. Well, we did like an SB7 once and we keep getting this young man's voice and I go, hey, Adam, that's supposedly his name. Are you sick? And you'll get yes. And every time we went down there, you call upon Adam. But I did realize that this was actually a manipulative spirit. That's what we talk about where you have to go back and see what is exactly going on and try to understand the thin line between every one of these kinds of hauntings. Is this really a child spirit? And why is a child spirit really down there? Or is this a manipulative spirit trying to lure you? So you have to take your time, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, and go through all this stuff to kind of come to some kind of real conclusion. And yeah. we came to the conclusion it's a manipulative spirit pretending it's a child named Adam. Right. I mean, because, you know, we were at, at Oberabu Inn, so I always call it OBI, and I that's kind of like my home. Yeah. That's my home base. That's my, like, which I'm going to bring Neil and Larry out. Yeah, yeah I was about to say it. You, you, you promised. I'll get you guys there. Anyway, so, I mean, but we were able to get the same spirits at the same times and, and the same voices on EVPs all the time, so we know what spirits are, and, and I've worked with each one of the spirits, so it's it's neat when you kind of understand the location like that as you can really start putting stories together and and put you know like like you always say you know that you know the what do you call it the I'm losing it come on man <laughs> the trends trends there you go that's the word Thank you. <laughs> that's all right it's all right we all gotta take our brain pills sometimes it's okay i, I do it every day i gotta take it more often I gotta take it twice a day nowadays. You gotta stop this dang heart from skipping all the time, for God's sakes. Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna do my news. Really all right. Quickly. Now, this is actually a very interesting story. All right. Uh, video. Wow. Here, you know what? Let me do the story first, and then we're gonna watch this video, and you tell me what you think. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, let's do that. All right. Carnivals are always a place for memories. Whether they come from an exciting ride, delicious food, or a giant prize won in a game. However, one mom left the carnival with an incredibly strange experience. She will never forget. That woman from Malaysia, Miss Nur, filmed her five-year-old son, Muis, along with a boy seated next to him as they slowly spun around on a ride. The kids and everyone on the ride seemed to be enjoying themselves as they re revolve around and going in this orbit ride. Her son 
is supposedly actually all alone, and no one is sitting next to him in this video. Okay. She shared this airy footage on TikTok with the caption, who is sitting next to Moise? She added, I am not mistaken, they were sitting together. I didn't know the boy next to him. I think the worker seated next to them together. While I was filming a short video, the car came around a second time and my son was suddenly alone. So the first time, the, this tilt the world type thing you're familiar with is, is going around. I, and I, had, I call it a spin and puke. Yeah. 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 Just the puker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The puker. And supposedly in this video that we're going to see, ladies and gentlemen, go to YouTube so you can uh, see all the videos that we put up. Um, you're going to see this young man with, there's two boys in this car. And then after one time around, Unless the kid got flung out somewhere, <laughs> and they look that fast, <laughs> you're gonna just see one. So let's take a look at this video. Uh, All right, let's look at this thing. All right. So and now I'm back with a good day, and I'm back. Now, oh, he was by himself this time. Yeah, let's look at that just one more time. He's not even going that fast. No, they're not. Even, so he didn't get flung out of that thing. No. Now, could somebody? I don't know how to do it with AI with something moving like that. I don't know. And now I'm back with a good day, and I'm back. Now, the kid now we went from two kids to one kid. That's, that's pretty cool. Freaky. That's freaky, man. I like that. Yeah, that was pretty freaky, man. And we're gonna get uh, we're gonna have some interesting conversation today. Uh, you have for us once again. Scotty brings to the table for us something awesome because he's yeah. the man. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors about him. Yeah, Here I know. We're talking to Mr. Paul Bradford. He he came out of retirement too. He hasn't done. Uh, he's not doing a lot of podcasts and stuff. But he he since I I started with you, he says I'd oh, be happy to come on with us. So he's excited to be here tonight. I'm excited to have him. One of my dearest friends, so probably the one the one man that I've known the longest in the paranormal. And he, really, yeah, he says that in all his lectures and stuff. Yeah, we've known each other. I mean, probably longer than Keith and I have known each other. So this is yeah. kind of cool. All right, just as long as, like, with Keith, I mean, that was a, a slinging back and forth between you two. Of, be ready, because Paul and I are the same thing. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Neil's going to be busy uh, avoid, uh, bleeping stuff out today. <laughs> but it's going to be a lot of fun. Mr. Paul Bradford, he was with Ghost Hunters International, and we are going to have him next. So stand by for this great interview. And as always, boys and girls, boo. Hey there. If you're on the hunt for some pet debating podcasts about the supernatural, paranormal, alien, or anything that sends shivers down your spine, the Paranormal Guys Podcast has you covered. Find them on various streaming platforms and don't forget to check out them on YouTube channel at Graveside Paranormal. Happy listening and boo. And now, back to the Paranormal Guys Podcast. All right, Scotty, we are back, my friend. We are. Uh, we have and, we're, and we're recording. And we're recording. Uh, you know, last week, uh, the last uh, thing uh, we were uh, on there with uh, Rob Demarest uh, from Ghost Hunters International, because we're going to be on with Paul Bradford here from Ghost Hunters International as well. Um, my stupidity, my fault. I messed up. I thought I hit record. It was my fault. I it was I, a good conversation we had. Dude, we, were, we were deep in the conversation, <laughs> man. And then all of a sudden I go like this. Oh no. Do I say anything? Do yeah. I just want to keep going? I go, no, I have to. It's the only way we're going to complete this. <laughs> so I'll tell you, that was an interesting interview, man. That was a cool, uh -huh. dude. He's and like I, I was just telling Paul, he says what's on it. Rob says what's on his mind, is not afraid to say what's on his mind. No. Nope. just just says it, you know, you know, and that, that was a cool interview. But we are Tonight's here. Even cooler. What's that? Tonight's even cooler. One of my cool buddies, Paul's on with us tonight. Yeah. Very excited to have him. Now we have Mr. Paul Bradford on here today. I'm going to bring him in in a minute. Uh, I'll introduce you. And understand what I pulled from what I found about him is how I'm going to introduce him is from something that he has on Facebook. 
And it's more than just, you know, like a ghost or the paranormal or anything like that. And I always find this stuff to be very, very important to talk about really who the individual is. Uh, I'm going to put this on here. So who is Paul Bradford? He's a husband, a father, a super geek sci-fi buff, TV star, ghost hunter, traveler, photographer, inventor, author, all the above. Are any, are you any the wiser? No, me neither or neither. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a very interesting that I, I so I had to pull that Paul I want to bring you in Paul I pulled that from your thank you for coming in I pulled that from your Facebook I thought that was just really really nice you know how like I don't know if you put that on there wife put that on there actually it was a buddy of mine um out of Florida I I'm not sure if he's still out in Florida now but uh, I actually he uh, I asked him to help me write that that was oh, uh, a long time ago <laughs> But basically, he was like, so what do you want it to say? And I was like, well, I want it to include this, 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 and this. And then he just ran with it. And um, I said, sort of, I, I kept it. That was from my Facebook. <laughs> yeah, you know, so what it is. from my face, but. Yeah, I thought it Probably. was nice. <laughs> I thought it was nice that uh, that was put in there for you. Um, and I, when I when I see things, I, I see them, they, they come out at me. And I said, you know what? Why don't I present him like this as someone's friend? Everything that he truly is, other than just uh, the ghost. My friend. Your buddy, your pal, Scotty. Yes. Yeah, that's good. So, so Paul, we'll start way back in our way back machine because, like I way told back. Neil, like I told Neil before we came on the air, I said, I said, Paul and I have been friends for ages. Well ages. before, well before GHI. Yep. Yeah, because I was there the night I was there the night he got cast, and he mm -hmm. calls me up and says I got cast. He goes, I can't do your show anymore. So, remember that yeah. night? That was really <laughs> it was pretty, I was so excited for you. We well, had a number of nights that were incredibly incredible and 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 memorable. Yes, yeah, we was, had we had some great time. Paul was on my radio show originally on my now we call the radio shows back then. We did, now they would be podcasts back then too. But I mean, oh, remember there was there was those um, there was those there's those ones which were like on their own sort of network and such. But then there was yeah. the everybody had their blog talk radio shows. Yeah. What happened to blog talk radio? It's still there, believe it or not. It is. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes, That's, it's still out there. I had no idea that people were still using it. Yeah, people still use it. I I was asked to be on one. I was like, what blog talk? <laughs> no, no, I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> I am that. Old. So Paul. Paul came on my show and he was my tech guy. Mm -hmm. He started the gadget the, guru. The gadget guru. Yep. Every week he would come on with a new gadget and we would talk about him and and we brought out kind of like what you and I do with the news here, you know. So Paul and I did that, and yeah. uh, he was great. I mean, because he was back then he was starting out building equipment and mm -hmm. and I still got some original Paul Bradford equipment. Yeah, yeah. I think I sent you some of my original prototypes. It yep. was you and. Um, Bill Murphy. Yep. Um, I, I, I would, yeah, he and I would talk about um, different equipment as well. And, you know, he, he still has some of my original stuff as well. I just, I remember making him stuff. And I remember I would be like, okay, whenever I make something, I have to make two more. I've got to send <laughs> one. I've got to send one to Bill. You know, um, yeah. And it, it, yours, it was called Creepy Hollow Gear back then. It was, yeah, see, yeah, it was Creepy Hollow Gear. And then, and then, then Paul did the graphics for our radio show and our radio That's network. Right. He oh did it because we changed our name to Dark Plains Radio, and he made the <laughs> gorgeous banners and stuff back then for us. Oh yeah, nice. it, it was. No, it, I, it, I had a lot of time on my hands back then. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, so you just, here, just got here from overseas, you know. Well, what it was is that, like, I think the the, the, the ghost hunting was like the hobby. Right. But it was the only thing I was allowed to do at the time because right. I was like like Scully was saying, like I was actually working on my green card. Oh really? So like I was I was still doing all that that you know to become a, a, a legal alien. I mean I had like a, a temporary um uh, ability to stay in the country. I was allowed here legally. I wasn't you know, I didn't just cross the border, but you know, I was I was allowed here legally, but there was a lot of paperwork that goes with that and a lot of time and, and money um and so one of the things that i was doing was well it was it was my brother-in-law at, at the time um from my from my previous marriage 
um, he was uh, he was part of a ghost team, and he was like, "Hey, do you want to just come out with us?" And I was like, "Sure, it sounds cool," because um, I was more of an aliens guy. I'm more of a sci-fi dude, you know. I, I, a sci-fi dude. What the fuck is a sci-fi dude? Um, a sci-fi guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> Paul, let me ask you. So, are you a are you a Paul? Are you a Star Wars guy or a Star Trek guy? I'm a both of them guy. Yeah, oh, man. Oh, I can man. appreciate them both for exactly what they are. I mean, I have a full Mandalorian costume. He does. Um, I also have. I built one for my wife as well, um, as well as I built one for a buddy of mine. Um, it took me six months to build three costumes. Wow. But um, but mine is also in the his style of like, Buzz Lightyear. Looks so. like Lightyear. Buzz. His actually kind of looks like Buzz Lightyear too, which is an amazing look. <laughs> It now, is. You, uh, I get geeked out at Paul's creations all the time. Always have since the beginning. I mean, I remember the first one I got from you was the geophone. You know, it was a geophone. Yeah, did you know? Like, so I I did that geophone. Gosh, I, it was a long, long time ago. Um, and I did. I just. I I I got that from a, a website called BG Micro. They're not there anymore, unfortunately. But I built quite a good reputation with them because they had never heard. Like, first of all. I was one of the first people to make ghost hunting equipment. Right. Back then, I mean, we're talking... Oh, shit. We're talking almost 20 years ago. Hang on. That's not right. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 2007, 2008. Oh, no. my God. It's 15 years... Over 15 years ago. It was. That's stupid. That doesn't make sense. But anyway... Where the hell did that time go? Time goes, man. Time goes. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so 15 years ago, uh, you could not just go out and buy ghost hunting equipment. No. You right. couldn't. There was uh, two TV shows on television, maybe three. Um, there was, uh, obviously, GH. There was uh, Ghost Adventurers. Um, no, Ghost then, Adventurers wasn't quite starting yet. No, Ghost Adventurers. It was, it, was, it was brand spanking new at the time. Like, Correct. Correct. Paranormal, you, State. Was, Paranormal State was on. Paranormal, Paranormal State, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a um, uh, Ghost Lab. Do you remember that one? That yes. Bentley? That was on Discovery. Yeah, with the Clings, yeah. The yeah, other yeah. one was the other one was um, who was that? Um, was it? Um, it's like Leonard Nimoy's show was on. Sightings. At, Sightings. Sightings was that, or there was a show like that out at that there time. There was one that Jonathan Frakes did. Yeah, as well. Beyond. Uh, something Beyond. Believe. Oh my god! Factor was, fiction, was, but then literally, there was only like yeah. maybe like two ghost hunting shows, correct? That that followed people ghost hunting, um, and so you couldn't just go out and buy ghost hunting equipment. Like the only, the only infrared illuminators that you could buy, the extenders for your camcorder. Bear in mind, there was only like one camcorder that actually recorded in night vision at the time, and it was a Sony. It was, and um, I had that. that was it. <laughs> yeah, it was the only one you could get was a Sony oh, camcorder, and that was the only one that had night vision. Beyond that, people were using baby monitors and correct. security cameras. Yes. That's what they were using. So the problem with that is obviously they didn't have the audio, and what they were doing is they were walking around. The the cameras could only see like 7 to 10 feet in total darkness, and it was a very narrow beam. They couldn't see everywhere. So basically one of the first things that I did is I came up with an IR illuminator yes. that – would basically extend that to like 50 feet, I think it was. Oh, shit. Hang on. Uh, wait. I found one of my original ones. When oh, I was tidying, oh, I told you, you, know, you know, I told you I was tidying up the work. Yeah. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Okay. Well, hang. You know, Scotty, it's kind of like being in a, uh, a tinker's uh, workshop, you know? Yeah, it is. It, you know, like you say something, goes, hold on, hold on. What was really cool about it was I felt so so cool because I had all the gear. Oh, shit. Oh. I had there, the, oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. That's the original. It's still a bit dust. Look at that. It's got cobwebs on it. Um, <laughs> but it that was the original. Hollow. One of creepy the original ghosts. Yeah, the creepy hollow. It's even got the creepy hollow logo on it. Logo on it at the bottom. Wow. Yeah, yeah that was one of the first ones I ever made. The switch. This thing. Oh my god, the switch is. Well, I might have to put a new switch on. It. <laughs> man i think the switch is jammed up but anyway like so that was one of the first ones ever this is one of my little prototypes look it was a little one that actually i the idea of this one was to go because i built these glasses that that would you could mount these to like the glasses 
Yes. So yep. you could have the infrared light going around. So when right, you had the camera, right, right, right. you wasn't having to hold it and things like that. But yeah, and you know what's weird? This has been sitting in in a box forever, like. But I, it actually comes on. I don't know if you can. If wow. You can look at that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is the battery that's been in this for I don't even know how long. Like years, this battery has been in this thing. At least eight years. Thing still works. <laughs> but yeah um but the other cool thing with this and the reason that, that i did it this way with the the uh with these illuminators um was they would run off of a nine volt battery and that nine volt battery would basically last you the whole night mm -hmm. it would last you like so you could it was, it was like a eight was it four hours five hour battery something like that but yeah you would basically you, you know at the time you could only get sony's extender correct which which only added like another 10 foot to it um, or there was one that was uh, by a company called SEMA. Um, but the problem with those is both of them would only have a battery life of about 20 minutes. So when I started building those, and I started building those just for my team. Um, and then we did a, a couple of investigations with a couple of other groups locally. And this is when I was living out in Arizona. Um, and uh, there, was a, there was a woman, her name was Debbie, Debbie Branning, Debbie Banning. I just call her Debbie, but she's um, she like you. She's basically been following my 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 career, um, uh, in, you know, in the paranormal career um, since the beginning. Uh, but she she was running hosting a sort of uh, you know everybody come and join us at the I think it was in Bisbee. Um, so anyway, I had my stuff there, and they're like, oh, could you build us some of those? So I started building stuff for other teams and things like that. And then um, I started a MySpace page. You did with the creepy hollow gear. That I literally just, I was selling stuff through MySpace. I hate, uh -huh. basically created this shop because you, at the time you could manipulate the, uh, the HTML, uh, the, the, the coding. So I manipulated all the coding so you could literally just press a buy now button and it would go through to my PayPal and, and you know, it would, it would come up with their address and everything. And I just basically built this stuff and sent it on and I would build like one on one. And I was only selling it for like $35. And the, the, the cheapest one you could get from Sony was like 120, 130 bucks. So, you know, and that's, that's basically how it started. I was building ghost hunting equipment for ghost hunters. Um, wow. Let and, me ask and, you this. You know, Let me ask you this, Paul. Is uh, when you went out to places, because you're the tech guy, were you ever just so baffled in the beginning when you first started doing this, why batteries yeah. were just getting drained so easily? No. That never really, I don't know. There was those times where it was, more, it was just annoying. Um, but you know what? Because that never happened with my with my lights. Right. My they lights, never, like they never just like I never, you know, people. Or the geophone. We never, them. we never lost because the geophone also had the nine volt. Right. That was a little nine volt that clicked in. Yeah. No, they just they that that thing would last forever. Like I mean, that battery would last for several investigations. But yeah, I mean, I. It was mostly rechargeable batteries i found whenever it came to like battery drain this weird phenomena that was a battery drain my thing was though is i was traveling around the world i was you know we're going in planes coming out of planes they were going at different temp you know different lots of different temperatures lots of different altitudes um you know lots of different like moisture levels as well that at that point you can't say it's anything but environmental because there's so many other reasons that your batteries are just draining that you can't say oh yeah the ghost is using my electric i mean no, i mean and it was it was just one of those things i think that a lot of people just wanted to jump on that bandwagon when they couldn't say orbs anymore they needed <laughs> something else and i think that's where the whole battery drain stuff came from like i find that you know people are wandering around in the dark in the cold and they're wondering why the batteries aren't because there's a sudden change of temperature or the temperatures are changing, you know? Um, yeah. But I don't think it was anything paranormal. You know, we, we actually um, came up with some, Oh God, cobwebs. Oh, and that broke. Um, but yeah, so, um, oh, uh, you know, we, were, we came up with tools where like that would literally just put out energy and we were like, you know, here it is, here is uh, 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 some sort of generator help yourself to any of the energy that you want um yeah i actually that, have that from you too that the, it's a little blue one about like this big and it does emf and it pumps yeah. it Dude, there was so much stuff that i was just sort of experimenting with at the time i've forgotten half of the stuff i made right 
you know. I uh, didn't because I loved everything you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think the best thing I ever did was after GHI, um, and that was the Boo Buddy. Yes. I think that was probably the best thing I ever came up with. Um, and that was just, that was a, a bear that talks and does the investigation for you. Yep. That's what you get a lazy ghost hunter. So, Paul, a bear Paul, does hold on, wait you. a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Paul. Let's all just stop for a second. You're <laughs> the man who came up with the Boo Buddy? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I invented Boo Buddy. Are you kidding me? No. I didn't know that. Yeah, the voice is my daughter from like seven years. Uh, no, wait. Shit, Almost. 15 years ago. Exactly. 14 Are you years ago. Kidding me? Nope. No. Yeah, that's me. I do. I, you had to have made some really good tall cash with that. I didn't know because no. I was working for a company <laughs> at the time. That obviously when I'm when I was and and and, and you know, I built a prototype. Which oh, I saw that around here somewhere. Oh dear lord, <laughs> the prototype one. Well, and well, it John. wasn't the original prototype. Well, was it? It might be actually. Where did I put that? Ladies and gentlemen, if you get a chance, go to the YouTube channel other than listen to Spotify. You just got to see Paul. He, he's like this workman in this shop. And he is. <laughs> he's like he's like the. the oh, my guy. God. He's great. You gotta, you gotta and he's going to go get it because his 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 downstairs in the basement there, when you go through the doors, yeah. that's where he keeps all his cool stuff, all his, his amazing stuff. Here it comes. Get out of oh, here. That is the first Boo Buddy there. That was the first. Like, so the thing with this one, okay, so first of all, the backpacks I sourced from a company from New York because I needed something to put the battery pack into. So I, get, I basically gave it a backpack. In the feet, now here's the problem. So the, one of the problems I had, and this was just a, the original version, and that's what this is, the original version, was an ELF meter that has just like three lights to it. It just had the three lights. And what I did is the on light, which is the green one, I put in its stomach. So that when you turned it on, there was a green light in its stomach. The other two lights went into the paws. So based on the strength of a signal, one paw would come on or two paws would come on. That was the very basic one. But what I, and I, 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 I came up with that, I was like, that would be good for a trigger. But then I sent Sean, who was, uh, who's the guy who owns Ghost Stop. That's what I, who I was, I was working with. Yeah. I sent him a text, say, hey, what if I could make it talk? And he's just like, if you can do it, do it. So I came up with this idea of using, and this was just the prototype, but it was the, um, it was from a, um, like a, like a greeting card. And it would just be like, it had like a, a one minute, you could put a one minute audio file on it. And then when you open the card, it would do the song or whatever, right? Well, instead of doing a song, I literally had it ask three EVP questions. And I had my daughter do it for me. So she asked, well, first thing she did, like, when you, when you press the button, yeah, when you press the button in the paw, in the, in the bottom paw, um, it would ask, it would say, hi, I'm Boo Buddy, what's your name? And that's still what the first, and that's still, even to this day, that's what the original one does. Uh, that's what the, uh, the new one does. Um, and then it would say, it would give like a 30 minute, like, silence and then it would say do you want to be my friend or something and then it, it would leave another 30 seconds or i think it was like 25 seconds then it would ask another question and that was it i used up the entire uh like one megabyte uh that it had um so in addition to the fact that it had an emf meter built into it um it also had this sound file going into it and it would just speak out of the stomach um but the problem with that is that it was it would kept toppling over so what i did is i made bean bags and with ball bearings in in the paws so that it could sit forward and not fall over wow so yeah that was and that was the original boo buddy that was the very first um boo buddy that was available um yeah and and basically after we we were working on that after we did that we um ended up um hiring well we, we we went looking for an engineer and we found this guy who was willing to work with us because you got to imagine it's a very strange thing you know um hey can you build us a bear that does ghost hunting um <laughs> so basically um Teddy took, uh, who goes, uh, <coughs> well that was actually that was the inspiration for the talking that's what i figured 
there was I, I I think there was a magazine or something that I happened to just catch a picture of Teddy Ruxpin and I was like, wait, what if I could make it talk? And so that's that's basically how that happened. Um, and we found this guy and we told him what exactly what we wanted to do and he was just like, yeah, I think I can do that. And that's what we did. We made a bear that had a vocabulary of over 40 phrases. It could detect EMF. It could detect fluctuations in um, temperature, and it could detect um, motion, movement, like it, movement of itself or vibration. Right. Um, and and yeah, and then that was it. So basically, it would sit in a room, ask an EVP questions. Did you ever <laughs> invent any spirit boxes? No. Well, we have the we do have the. Um, I say we. I haven't worked for Ghost Stop forever, but I still feel like you know. Um, yeah, I was I, I was there at the, the the beginning of it really. Um, sure. There was the um, there is one. It's it's called. Oh, what is it called? I think it's something like the. Because oh, the, the original one was like Mel's box or Frank's box. Frank's, or... Frank's box that the, where he wanted to talk to aliens. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Frank Sumption. Sumption. Frank Sumption. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, somewhere I have, and it just fell into my hands because I do ghost tours in Chicago and some other company. Chicago, yeah. Yeah, thought it was mine. And they had <laughs> me. And one of my guys goes, Neil, do you know what that is? I go, no, actually, I don't. And he goes, he goes, dude, that's a Frank's box. He goes, grab that sucker. And so I grabbed, I know I have it somewhere <laughs> in my house here, somewhere. I know I do. I know I, I used to have one of the Radio Shack hacks that I did. So here I got this one from Paranormal Systems, and you're gonna help me fix this, Paul. Oh, okay. I can't get this to work anymore. Ah, uh, okay. This used well, to be one of the radios. No guarantees. No guarantees, but I, I know you. You got. You it. know you what I do it. have? Do you remember? I've been. Ghost? This has been sitting collecting dust for years because I, I just can't get it to work like it used to. Do you remember the Ghost Arc? It was yeah. horrible. Yeah, was I remember horrible. watching. I think they had that on Ghost Adventures. I think. No, so well the problem. So here's the thing with the Ghost Arc. It was this Italian dude um, who hit us up. This is back when I was at Ghost Up. He hit us up because he wanted us to endorse this thing and like pay for it. And we were like, well, no, I don't think we're gonna do that. <laughs> um, but like, tell us about it. And and he had like he was. I mean, he certainly like he talked the talk, and he certainly like walked the walk as well. I mean, he he had like translators and accountants and all this stuff. Like, this was going to be the next big thing. It looked like something from Tron, and it did everything. And uh, a lot of people, you know, put in an order for one. A lot of people, um, you know, paid a lot of money for these. It was like three hundred dollars a piece, I think. Um, and when the handful of them came out, um, they looked nothing like they were supposed to, um, but they were also made incredibly cheaply. Wait, I just realized this is, hang on. Sorry. I just realized my air purifier is going because I, I, because of the laser engraver and the smoke and stuff. Right. I no, no. A, I understand. Oh. Yeah, have you I ever, the, have yeah. you ever heard of a thing called, it's an, it's a newer, uh, product that came up, but it's not really a product yet. It's a group, uh, that has made a thing called static com. Have you heard of this? A static com? Static com. S T A T I C O M com. Mm. I had them on as an interview and what they're doing is they're taking white noise and it's slowing it down. Um, and I don't know the whole dynamics of it, but some of the things that they're getting from these responses are some pretty intelligent responses. I don't know the person, but I had them on the show. It was just mm -hmm. some very interesting stuff where they're just taking white noise. They're not using worth streaming or using AM, FM, uh, or any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. They're just using plain white noise. And they're putting it at a certain decibel or something like that. And they're running the speeds at whatever speed that they're running it at. And they're getting these cool responses. It's, it's interesting. And they actually were working for a police department where they were helping to solve some cases. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I once again, I just wanted to know if you knew anything about it. No, I don't. I don't know. I mean, my thing is, if you have to manipulate audio, then there's probably nothing there. But, um, I mean, they're not really manipulating it. They're just sort of speeding up. I mean, I, or, or, are they slowing it down or speeding it up? We know. They're slowing it down. Huh. It's almost the opposite to the theory that I was having. Yeah, like I would too, because, like, take for instance, like a fan, right? A lot of times yeah. when people have a fan in their bedroom, we sometimes hear music, right? Right. I hear of, I hear stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you'll hear, I, I hear, hear the it. music. It. Uh, it's it's sometimes just something that's uh, in your head, so you don't go mad. It's like a natural mm-hmm. thing that's inside your head, so you don't go mad. But it drives but, me mad. That's what actually drives me mad. Yeah. I cannot I cannot deal with repetitive noise. Mm-hmm. It, it it drives me, and the thing is, I fixate on it. Like so, that fan, that little fan, that's yeah. all I hear now. I don't hear anything else. I have right. to sleep with the television on just so that I don't hear something else. But go on. Really? You yeah, see, I, I, have have to. To. I'm, I'm I, have to. I have to have the fan. Yeah, I have me too. To. I yeah, the fan's on. on, but I have to drown out the noise of the fan. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> oh, man. That's cool. Yeah. Now, let me, let's get to your GHI. <laughs> um, now, what year did uh, GHI start? What year did it start or what did I start with GHI? When did you start? I started in 2009. Nine. I think 2007, maybe 2008 is when it started. That's what I thought, 2007. Um, you came in 2009. Yeah, I started basically, it was season two, episode six, I want to say. Uh, the episode was called Holy Ghost. Yeah. Uh-huh. And Where were you uh, at? I was out in Chile. Chile and Argentina were my first episode. What was the story there? Uh, first one was a convent, I think. No, was it or a monastery? It was a monastery, but it was now a library or something. Or it was the now it was like the the city chamber or something, you know. Um, <clears throat> and they just kept seeing these these figures wandering through the grounds and things. Um, what was really funny though, and this is the thing, I, I mean, what people don't realize is obviously we've got to find uh, a lot of people who are local, so we interview a lot of people. But at the same time, we need someone to actually show us the the, 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 the tour, you know, give us give us give us the, the, the stories. So we have our researchers, they go in and they get all the stories from all the people and then they interview everybody so they know exactly what's going on before we even get there. So when we get there, they need to find somebody who's going to tell those stories and show us all the different areas where this stuff's going to happen. Right. Well, so um, we're going through now. It's me. It, well, it's Rob. Rob's at the front. Then it's Barry, Dustin, and me. And 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 you know, so there's four of us on this tour. First of all, that's like the first time that's ever happened because normally it's just the three people. But I'm on this tour with them, and uh, we're wandering through. Um, and this 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 little Spanish girl, um, or Chilean maybe. Um, she she speaks english but not great um and that's fine we're not we're not you know um so we're going through these terms and there's this one particular room she goes to this this is an office and she talks about how this coffee cup and uh rob oh my god okay so (laughs) so the the woman she's you know what it is is the story is there was two women in this 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 office and this coffee cup goes flying across the room well she kept saying there was these two girls in a cup and it was funny but we were like we're gonna let go but the thing is she just kept talking about two girls in a cup and this was you know 15 years ago (laughs) this is you know 2000 so we were we just thought this was hysterical and we were trying not to laugh but at this point rob was laughing i was about the joke about the joke of it Right, about the two girls in a cup. Right, it's, right, you know, right, right. Right, right. Um, and so, you know, but the thing is, she had no idea what this was about. She doesn't know what two girls in a cup is. Um, <laughs> so so I, ultimately, like, we could not stop. So we had to keep going out and coming back in and starting again. Well, anyway, it got to the point where, like, we had to just pay her the fee and have her like thanks very much and she left <laughs> and we had to get our driver to give us the tour 
I so, mean. Yeah. <laughs> you just, I mean, we were just at that point. Once the problem is, is when you start, when someone starts laughing, it's very difficult to stop because right. you've now got a okay, quick serious face, and then something happens or someone can't stop, and it's just it's contagious. It is contagious, and I think for a solid fifteen minutes, we were trying really hard not to laugh. Right. But, you know, and it just, it got to the point, so yeah, as I say, so basically what we had to do is our driver, who was native, you know, to, to, to the area, um, uh, I think his name was Carlos, and uh, he basically, we, we basically told him the, the stories before we went into each room, okay, this is the, well, we didn't, because we didn't know him, but the, the, the production crew basically told him, right, when we go into this room, this is what happens, this is what the claims are, so he would take us in, tell us what the story is, and then, you know, but we had to do that after the investigation now so we've right. done the tour already but that tour was no good so right. we've already done the investigation now we had to do the tour again so for the camera's sake we had to do the whole tour again we had uh, carlos walk us through and then they did literally uh like 10 minutes later they did the reveal you know so the episode itself is shot so out of order but basically all he did is he took his jumper off his sweater off and now he's sitting at the table so he's wearing the same clothes as he was in the tour <laughs> But apparently he wore like three nights ago when before we did the investigation, you know, the week before when we did the investigation. But in reality, we did the tour. Then they did the reveal of what we discovered. <laughs> We'd already done the investigation at that point. Like it, and seeing as though that was like literally like my first investigation, I was like, oh, so they OK, so we don't do that. And we don't do like the filming of us driving around the streets. We don't do that. <laughs> We usually just going round in a circle in the parking lot, or right round the uh, same like a, a block of you know the, the buildings that we're just sort of going in a circle. When they film us going through the streets, that's not us in the cars. If you watch, it's usually the audio people in the cars driving around because they don't need audio when they're just filming in the street. Right. So yeah, they just set up cameras, have the audio guys drive the cars round, and then that's it. You know. But wow. yeah, so when you yeah, it's, the whole the whole magic was gone. You know. <laughs> No, that, 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 was so fun. that was so fun back in the days when oh. when remember in the days we didn't have facebook or anything like that yeah. and, and um you guys used to call me on skype and we used yeah. to talk on skype and you guys you used to tell me about all the locations and then i tried to tell them about hey this place would have been more haunted but they go oh we're already past that we're already yeah. to this next one yeah we're done now yeah well i still done. called you up when we did uh when i was doing trending fear you were you did and that was one that was the one i did for travel channel i did a show for travel channel called trending fear that was uh 2019. yep <clears throat> and uh there was a particular case it was actually a voodoo case i think um was it the voodoo case or was it something else that sounds Maybe interesting tell us about the voodoo case dude i i think it was it was because i was asking you about the crystal ball right yeah okay did I call you back up and ask you why people would put cat bones in buildings? Correct. Yeah, that was a different case. That was the one in Texas as well. Anyway, so, yeah. so basically... You call me, uh, you call me on a bunch. <laughs> yeah, I do call you a lot for that stuff, weird yep. stuff. Um, basically, uh, the voodoo case was quite fascinating. That was actually out in Oregon. Uh, the grandmother, however, who had passed away, left a, a crystal ball to her daughter, a uh, granddaughter, and there was a lot of weird shit happening because of it um right. and yeah we actually ended up flying in a voodoo priestess from like down the louisiana bayous you yeah. know um and she came in and she did a whole ritual she was swinging this freaking machete around and all sorts of we're like oh my shit this is <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh my goodness but yeah so that was that was interesting yeah. very interesting yeah if you have um discovery plus trending okay. theories on that one um ghost hunters international is on peacock yeah but yeah trending fear that was a good show. i really enjoyed that show that was a good show yeah i'm gonna see i i've never watched it and i'm not gonna lie to you i'm gonna check it out tonight i'm gonna see if i can find it i'm gonna check it out yeah yeah discovery yeah. plus and i'm gonna go right to the voodoo one dude i want to see the voodoo one the um there's one that's in um Oh gosh, hang on. So they, they did it. They, they they actually aired them slightly out of order, but the first one we actually did was the one at Norwood, which was a theatre. I think that was like episode two or three. 
Mm -hmm. The first one they aired was out in New Jersey. The funny thing with that is that there was a particular story that the client changed her mind. She didn't want to sort of go into that too much. She didn't, but it was a very, it was, it was kind of an important part of the story. She was kind of afraid to do it. Um, so what they did, and I had no idea of this until the time, but basically she was a big fan of mine from GHI. So they were like, look, we'll give you like, if, you know, like a, a, a few minutes with Paul, uh, before we start filming everything, you can take some photographs. You can do basically they hoard me out in order, <laughs> nice. in order to get to these extra stuff. No, no, no. But like she, she got to ask me sort of questions, anything like that, anything that was like, you know, that was all off camera, but she wasn't allowed to tell me anything about the case, anything about that particular, you know, but that, that particular case, but she was <laughs> you know, basically, it was like a, a private one-on-one -on -one with the, with, with this person who was a fan of the show of, of GHI. And uh, that was, that was, see, that still, even to this day, like, if someone is a fan of my, like, okay, so this is weird as hell, because it's still, I still get it. I do get every now and again, I will get somebody saying, ah, oh, you're the guy from television, you know, the Ghost Hunters guy, right? And I'm like, I am. That's crazy that you even know that, or you remember that, or whatever. But, um, but I was in Scotland about two years ago with my wife and some friends of ours yep. and we were in Edinburgh Castle and we're wandering around Edinburgh Castle going through the different rooms and stuff and this guy taps me on the shoulder and says hey uh you're Paul Bradford right from Ghost Hunters and I was like yeah and he's like oh I, I love that show man and I was like thanks very much and I was like this is the craziest shit ever like you know like the people the fact that people still recognize me now and I, I mean you know I'm a lot older now and you know fatter and you know but it's 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 crazy that uh, and, and the funny thing is so i was down in florida i met my parents at universal studios right uh -huh. um, i surprised my sister she had no idea i was going to be there so i surprised them i went down there and um we're wandering through and for, for some reason i got i got recognized uh, but for some reason like it happens it happens a couple of times in different places when I was with my dad, that now my dad thinks I get recognized all the time. <laughs> Just because he's been there a couple of times when it has happened, he's like, he assumes it happens all the time now, when really it hadn't happened for years until I was happened to be just in that particular spot and that, you know, so, but yeah, your dad's, it, your dad's thinking like you're the Brad Pitt of ghost hunters. Oh dude. my guys. It's, it's crazy. I can't go anywhere without being recognized. And it's like <laughs> it's totally opposite, but still, you know, it's just, it is funny though, that, it, you know, it just happens that w when I was with him, it happened like twice. And so now he just thinks I get recognized all the time. <laughs> you know what? For you guys who did the international, I have to ask this question. This is just my yeah. question is, did you guys, because of your diets or whatever, get sick a lot from, uh, you know, going to certain uh, different locations and eating different types of foods? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, because I am an incredibly picky eater anyway that I just wouldn't eat anything I wasn't sure about. Dustin yeah. is probably the um, pickiest eater. Like, he... he, I mean, he has a very... You know, that he, that's what he wants to eat. And, and no one... No one messes with his food it has to be how he was you know um you know uh susan was probably the most adventurous person um as far as food is concerned she was probably the most adventurous in trying new things um i think rob did as well but i just seem to remember susan would just basically try anything um <laughs> me i would just i mean seriously i would basically be on a diet of like rice and potatoes um, just because I just wouldn't. I mean, I when I was in Australia, I had kangaroo. Really? Uh, yeah. How about, how about Tepperman? Did he eat a lot of weird stuff? I don't think so. No. No, I don't. He think doesn't so. seem like he would. No, no. I mean, he's he was weird in that like he would he would have to have his steak well done. Yes, he would. And 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 so it's like, well, in that case, I just don't trust the guy. <laughs> you know, I don't, can't trust anybody who has a steak well done. I don't mean medium, always medium at least. Medium, yeah, medium yeah, rare. Yeah. That's how I have we it. Had, so. We used to have so much fun. We used to do, uh, Neil, we used to do a show at conventions where I would lead it. We did um, the paranormal match game. Oh, and, yeah, that was fun. And then Paul was always, I always, anytime Paul was there, he had to be on it with us. So 
we would do we would do just like the match game, and I would lead it, and and I get all these weird ones. And I just played one where where I remember um, Scott Grunewald was on there. He let his, he let his chest hair on fire. Oh, oh hey, hey, yeah, remember that? That was uh, up at that was up at Tim Miley's. Yeah, that was the one. In, was it in Wisconsin? Yeah, it was in Wisconsin. Yeah, yep. Yep. yeah. That I was up in the Oh, hey, how about you? Weren't you with me? The one where we did, where we were at that, um, at that investigation, and 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 it was, there was a bar, and we were in like an old um, funeral home, and then we would roll uh, down around the windows. You were there. Remember that? Probably. And, and so it was so funny because there was drunk people out there and we were inside investigating. So Paul and I would roll up against the windows and try to scare the hell out of the people. And then we'd roll right. back oh so they wouldn't God. see us. Yeah, I, I took it all very seriously. Yes, um, you did. <laughs> no, I, I made him do it. So I said, come on, Paul, let's do it. <laughs> it's always those, those types of ghost hunts, man. They're just, I mean, honestly, I kind of got to the point where these are just a waste of time. It's just really an opportunity for people to spend one-on-one -on -one time with Correct. a celebrity that they're a particular fan of or some sort you know those types of things so i would just make i would just have some fun with it like right. there's the you always got like oh my god you'd always get these one or two teams that wore like swap vests and shit, yeah. and you're just like dude what the hell are you trying to scare the ghost what the hell are you trying to do here like honestly there it was it was it was a point where like i i would see these teams in like full swap gear like these giant vests and almost like bulletproof gear, you know, it's like this. And they'd just be going into some old lady's house because she hears some creaking in the floors. I'm like, dude, her neighbors must be wondering what the hell she's up to. You know, you've got these guys, you know what I mean? It's like they pull up oh, in I do. I... SUVs and. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Um, I know of, uh, I've, I've seen people like that. And I understand if you're wearing like a tool belt to have everything in it, I get that. But when you start wearing this bulletproof looking bulletproof vest, right? These like these tactical vests. And, where's your grenade, shit? man? What is going on here? Right. It's like you don't need that much space for batteries. You can right. have a box and go back and get it. Like everything hasn't got to yeah. be there and then the whole. You know, it's like holy hell, how much shit are you gonna carry? And to be other... honest with you, dude, it's half the time when I do like an investigation or whatever, I take people somewhere. I just have a recorder and an EMF in my pockets, and sometimes I don't even remember where I put them, and so I just go back to right. the box and I go grab another. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just I I don't I actually I I kind of stepped away just because I, there was so much drama and sh and I just like oh, too yeah. many people, too many frauds out there, too many people who were just like capitalizing off the fact that they were on tv and i'm i'm this great person because i was on tv and it's like that doesn't make you anything at all no you know, you're mean, not a celebrity and that's one of the things i've never said i was a celebrity i'm like ultimately i was i was lucky enough to be able to travel around the world i was lucky enough to see yeah. places that had never been seen. And i was very lucky to even just be part of a television show let alone two or three you know so it's like I, I was very, very lucky to be able to do this. And I was very lucky to be able to make friends along the way. See, that's you know? that's what I was going to say. That's the that's the thing I loved about you since the beginning of time was the fact that you were always friends with everyone. You know what I mean? Right. It, it, you were just you were so down and you would let us know and you would tell us, you know, our opinions and your opinions. It was fun. I mean, that's what it yeah. was. We would debate. We never always agreed. But, no. you know. Hell no, and that would be boring if we did. Right. But, but, you know, we were always best friends after. You know, we always right. went out and had dinner together. We always had a good time together, and that was the coolest thing about it at all. Right. And I, I mean, you know, I never went out of my way to piss people off, but I also went out of my way to like call them out on their bullshit. You did. Because, you, you did. Know, I, you know, and there's a couple of people who I, I worked with who were on the show with me that that yeah. literally just. Are just ripping people off by selling their shit and you know you know signing their their, their their autographs and all that shit like they didn't do shit for the show they don't do shit after the show right they done they contribute to the field in no way whatsoever and yet they're they're more than happy just to take people's money and that drives me nuts right but now the biggest thing the biggest thing i wanted to bring up is is outside his garage door all the way in the back he's got an ecto sitting out there too <laughs> he does oh do you wow <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he yeah. does. One night yeah. we had him, we had him together in in Illinois. Yeah, we did a we did a cruise, didn't we? We joined. Yeah, we did. Remember that? 
Yeah, we had them both back to. We had them actually. They were next to each other, both them with the the sirens going and yep. lights in, flashing. In Mattoon, we were in Mattoon, Illinois. Yeah, yeah. Do you miss it at all, though, Paul? What miss what the the, the miss, shows? Yeah, like being uh, going to all those uh, different countries. Yeah, I felt very comfortable um, in front of the camera. Um, you know, I, I did. I did feel you know very comfortable and. I think, you know, after GHI, it was very... So here's the thing, like, with the GHI style of it. Um, you know, it, it wasn't always fun, um, you know, traveling the world, being away from the family, things like that. You know, it, it, it took a lot out of you. And like you're saying, you know, you're going to places that you, you've never been before. You don't know what's there. You don't know... You know what's safe to eat, what's safe, what's not. That would like, be you, my you, concern. You know, for the most part, you couldn't even drink the water in a lot of these countries because um, we were in the you know back and beyond. We weren't necessarily in these very touristy areas. Um, you know, we didn't know the, la the the language of a lot of these places, um, and you know, it was one of those things where certainly I made the most of the opportunity that I had. I believe that I definitely made the most of the opportunity that I had um but it wasn't easy um and the other thing is, is is i joined that show in season two the show was already established at this point okay. um you know and it was it was definitely a sort of an us and them you know at the very beginning like they didn't know why i was there the, the crew sorry the cast um, didn't know why I was there. I was the seventh member to the team. There's only ever been six members to this team who was going to get the chop. So, <clears throat> you know, it was, you know, the only, only people that really talked to me at the beginning was, was Rob and Barry, um, you, you know, cause they were, I mean, and those obviously, cause they're, I guess the team leads and stuff, but even then, like it, it kind of felt sometimes like they were just, or well, people just wanted to know why I was there. Um, you know, what, you know, who, whose job was I taking? Um, and so at the very beginning, it wasn't all, all fun and games. And, you know, it seemed to me like I was just being like, you know, you know trying to be this, this, you know, nice to everybody and trying to be friendly with everybody. But like everybody was very standoffish. Um, and it, it made it very sort of almost a little difficult for me at the beginning. Um, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, Rob uh, and I, you know, we 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 uh, formed a, a friendship, um, and then you know, with with Barry also and Joe, and I think with Barry and obviously, you know, it, it, as the show progressed and, and Rob was no longer with us, um, you know, we you know certainly I think you know it, it I, I think the locations were a lot better then. Um, but then they brought Chris and Britt in to sort of stir the pot a little bit. And then Britt got fired and, and, and Scott came out, you know, and it was the, I think the later shows had the much better uh, locations. Um, but at the same time, you know, we were fighting the fact that Chris didn't want to be there right. at all. Like she was just complaining the whole time. And and for a lot of the shows, she just like for a lot of the episodes, she would just shut down, like you know, she just didn't want to do anything, you know. So like it was a case of like we were doing the tour, and the production team would be like, Chris, can you just ask a question, you know, we need you to, you know, participate, do something, um, you know. And so we, you know, it it made it suck a little bit, you know. Like for the rest of us, we we're just like, oh my god, here we go again, you know. And that so that made it a shitty atmosphere. Um, you know, we were traveling the world. We were, you know, supposed to be experiencing all this new stuff, these new cultures and stuff. And we got, you know, this this Debbie Downer with us. Um, right. You know, and it ended up we were just sort of, we went and just did our own thing. You know, on on their days off and that we would just go do our own thing because, you know, it just it was it became it started to get toxic. You know. Um, so that's you know, yes, that's a shame. Yeah, it is a shame. It is a shame because, like I said, you know, we were given a, a, an amazing opportunity, and I think that, as a whole, the, the you know the it's a lot easier for a production team or a production company to just 
say, you know what, scrap the whole thing. Let's just do a new show, um, because you know, rather than just deal with the with with, with, with a diva, basically. Um, yeah. And I think that's what happened. You know, they so basically. Do you think they scrapped it because of one or two individuals? Yes, yes, I do believe so. Yes. Um, that's a know, shame. When, when someone makes it really difficult for the sh the production team to work, you know, it, it's a lot easier just to just shut it down and, and start again with a different show. And the problem was, is the show that they they decided to make was exactly the same show, but with like a bunch of like, you know, late teens, early twenty year olds. And it just didn't work at all. Yeah. Um, what was it called? Killer Contact, I think, or something like that. Um, and it just it just didn't work. I mean, they were using my equipment. But the problem was, is like we were put on hiatus, told to wait because we, we weren't sure if we were coming back or not. And they uh, during the whole time, they were making another show, not telling us, but using my stuff, using our cases. Um, and you could see uh, like when, when that show came out, like there was a handful of equipment they were using that still had my my tags on it from where I had to label everything when we were traveling. We had to have you know inventory and stuff. Right. Um, you know, so there was it was just like oh my god, they're actually using our equipment. That's our production team are making a whole new show with our stuff. Um, you know, so the you know we didn't even find out that that we weren't coming back until they released the DVD, the final season. Right. So it wasn't until like the DVD got released and it literally said the final season, they were like, "Oh, so we're not coming back then," because nobody <laughs> told us. Let me ask you this, and that's number yeah, one. That's tough. a shame. You know, it's it. I guess those are the ups and downs of working for production mm -hmm. companies and uh, working for studios. Right. Um. But what if um? One of the questions I was going to ask, man, it just slipped my mind because I was just saying that. Out of all, the, oh, I remember the one question I wanted to ask you is out of all the places when you first started going to these places for Ghost Hunters International, did you have a more of a non believer? And if you did, did you have a more of a believer of the places that you went to at the end? Or is that just too of a general question for you, you think? Well, no, see, the thing is, so we didn't know where we were going until literally like a week before we went. Um, so, you know, we would basically film four episodes sometimes three but we would film four episodes we'd go home for a week or two and then we'd go back out for another four weeks and so it was done this constant run so you know we didn't never knew where we we're going but there was always like hints or like oh we're going to be going there or we're going to do that that's cool or what yeah but we didn't never really knew any of the claims we didn't know the places we just knew the countries we were going to be going to um so when we got there, like, and there was that whole, you know, you can't have any sort of preconceived notion because shit, the most haunted looking location could have nothing. Whereas, you know, the, 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 the coffee shop is, is haunted as hell. Um, you know, you just, there's, you could never really sort of get a, a gauge on what was going to be good and what was going to be bad. Um, for example, we did um, an investigation in Belgium at the, um, it's, it's actually a, a World War II museum. It's outdoors. It's called the Trenches of Death. And the investigation, like the claims and stuff sounded cool, but like when you actually boil it down to that you're outside in trenches in the dark, everything looks the same. Yeah. Like you could not make a show of that. Right. Everything just looks the same, you know. And as I say, like with GHI, an amazing opportunity, you know, there was definitely a separation of cast and crew. And as far as the, you know, cast was concerned we were like you know it was a sort of stay in your lane you know it's a cookie cut format we just do what we have to do the only thing that we had control of was the investigation everything else was like production you know we had to do this for production had to do that for production had to do that for... the investigation itself and the evidence that we caught and stuff like that was ours right. we did that you know they had nothing to do with our equipment um you know if we heard a voice or something like that sometimes we would see if it was also picked up on the audio packs that we would have. You know, if it was like, right. we can hear something, but it's really quiet. Did they pick up something better? You know, sometimes, and it was very rare, but we'd have to get permission to, to use the production equipment. Like, can I get a copy of that recording? Um, but, you know, when it came to the, everything else, it was like, we had to just do as we were told. And, I, and that was one of those things which, like, it got kind of to the point where, like, you know, 
we couldn't even step out of of, of the box you know we, we were filming some amazing locations when it came to season three some really really cool locations um that would break away from that cookie cut format of you know when you turn on the, when you turn on ghi you see them in the cars you know they're in the cars they're like yeah. hey team right. here we are in chile and right, uh, right, right. these are the claims hey you tell us brandy or you tell us susan what's going on today and you know we're driving around we're not driving around but you know you know we're dri- you know, <laughs> you are driving around in a circle, we in a circle. um <laughs> you know so yeah you know, you know like and, you know, we, we get to the location we do the tour we go set up the equipment we do the investigation we break down the investigation put everything away we go back to our hotel we're now sitting in a room where there's four of us going hey guys listen to this we've heard all this before like everything that the the you know we we've, we've caught was caught you know we we went through that evidence the next day in our hotel rooms on our you know on our own you know, everybody was in their room. Everyone's got some audio. Everyone's doing something. They're looking, listening to stuff. It's like, oh, that's cool. And this, hey, you know. And then we'd meet away from the production team. We would meet and we'd run everything by Barry and say, hey, you know, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? What do you think of this? I'd listen to stuff. I'd be throwing stuff out. We'd have to have like a handful of things that we take to the, you know, to the table. Then they film us sitting at a table and then Chris and Barry go and present it to the client. That was the format. When we did Trending Fear, when I did Trending Fear, the production company, and I love these guys, it was a, it was a, they're, they're a Texas Crew Productions based out of Texas, um, never, done a t- never done a paranormal ghost hunting show before, um, did an amazing job of it. Um, you know, they were they were continually asking for my input, hey, how should we do this, or do you think it would be better if we did this, and, you know, and they actually... They actually worked with me and, and cared about my input. And that was a totally different experience to what I'd had out of Pilgrim Films. It feels right. nice. Um, it, feels it, nice. Was, it was an amazing experience. I was like, oh, I actually feel valued right now rather than just this guy who they, you know, has to go and do this thing. Right. And, and like- so, you know, we only did six episodes. But, you know, I, I, I've subsequently worked with them, that, that, that production company since. I, I did another little thing for them. Um, but yeah, I still talk to them because you know they 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 they're pitching ideas to me and, and I'm literally like, hey, this is great, let's do it, or this is great, let's do that. Um, you know, the problem is is you know there's not a lot of um, stuff going on right now, and you know, but like yeah, ultimately, you know, I'm, I'm getting ideas pitched at me, and and there are other shows that are, are, are always potentially in the works. Um, so you know, it, it's not a sort of never say never situation. Um, but at the same time, you know, I have my wife upstairs who is, who's a lot of work. I have to, I have to, you know, I've got to make some money, you know, I've sure, got to, you have to, it's life. you know, she is life. beautiful. I am doing a lot of work to try and keep her, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's not easy. Hey, okay. Know? Let's, let's stop there. Let me go back now, Paul and I, like I said, we did an original radio show. See, Paul has learned a lot to say really nice things about his wife. I'm going to tell the story, Paul. <laughs> so we're on the air. We're sitting here on the air. We're talking about our wives. We're making cut downs and stuff like this. And all of a sudden, Paul's wife, ex-wife, comes into <laughs> to the studio and starts cussing him out. And, and next thing you know, Paul goes, okay, guys, I got to go. Cause she's- I think I better go. <laughs> during the show, yeah. It was, uh, it was it during was like- the show. During, during the show. His segment. He's getting pulled out of the studio. He had to go because she was so mad at him for telling this stupid stuff. You know, we're making fun of her. I mean, we're making fun of all their wives, but they all know. I mean, all their wives are amazing. You know, Terry and... and no, no, but she wasn't. That was the thing. She that wasn't. Was, you know, she wasn't. No. And um, we're glad that she's gone, but but man, it was so funny. It, <laughs> oh, no, we were dying on the show. We were laughing so hard. We kept oh. We kept giving him. I still what? Fifteen years later, I still giving me hassle about that night. Oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> wow! Wow! It was, yeah, it was. But just, see now, Paul. Was, but see, Paul now knows. He says good things about his wife. Oh yeah, but here's the thing. This is the different. Like <laughs> this is what a marriage is supposed to be like. Yeah, it is. <laughs> not like She's, the other one. She is amazing. Isn't it? She yeah. is amazing. So, yeah, she is. She is amazing. All right. Um, well, uh, Paul. Number one, I want to say thank you very much. Uh, just probably just two quick questions. 
Cool. Uh, real quick, I'm sure you kind of still every now and then watch a couple of shows every now and then. Like, I don't really watch them really that much anymore, but um, do you feel that it's just the same direction over and over again and just repetitive? Oh, I stopped watching because it's just the same shit over and over. Yeah, like no one's I learned. No one's learned from previous mistakes. No one's like honestly, and this is, I mean, you know, yeah, I might just be tooting my own horn or whatever, but like, trending fear trending broke fear. the norm in 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 that you know that whole cookie cut thing. You know, I mean, how many times can we watch Zach doing the same shit over and over? Right, right, right. You know, and and Aaron doing the same shit over and over. It's it's like we're watching the same. Like the show hasn't gotten any better. I'm not saying the show, show shit, because obviously it, it, there's obviously some merit. It's still right. on, but you know, it, just because it's not my cup of tea doesn't mean it's not somebody else's. But the problem is, it's the same show, right? As it it's has the been at the show. beginning, and then you see like the Ghost Hunters returns, and it's gonna it's gonna be this, and it's, gonna, and it's the same show, right? It's the same stuff. I New think that a lot of people. But, I think a lot of people should uh, these production companies it, just from a viewership. Point of view what i'm saying but the problem is is, is that the, the networks don't want the different shows that's what so trending fear was supposed to be even more different than it was it was supposed to be a little bit more fun it was going to be like um uh, it was going to be a bit sort of scooby-doo meets mythbusters meets uh what's that one that josh gates did uh destination whatever fear. Yeah. i mean no destination so whatever yeah. one of those yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. it was going to be scooby-doo mythbusters you know, destination, whatever. And, you know, it was supposed to be a mixture of the two, a three, a mixture of the three. And it was going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have some fun doing it, but we're going to take it serious where it needs to be and all that. Well, when we did the first one, which is why I was saying we did the theater first, we actually filmed the theater first in Norwood. Um, they came back, first of all, they wanted more of me. That was the network note. We need more Paul in this. So I had to then go in and she do some more investigating and, and more because the original concept was I was just going to come in, show these two guys how to how to do the investigation, use this equipment, do this with that, do that. Good luck. I will see you in the you know, tomorrow, whatever. They changed that completely around and now made it that, you know, I would basically be there the whole time. They wanted me to build something new in every episode. Right. Um, you know, I, I would basically be the person who, okay, well, this is probably what we're looking for. And I was like the expert, um, you know, so that, that, you know, that, that, that completely changed. So what we filmed first, we had to go back and just do the whole investigation again. Uh. Um, just because travel, tra they, they they want to take risks. They don't want to take the risks. The no, I get it. You know, to take the risk because it's a format that's worked for so long. Right. But they don't want to deviate. And we did still manage to deviate. The episodes were not the same. There wasn't a cookie cut format to each episode. We were trying something new every time. Um, you know, and the only thing that shot me in the foot, well, two things. But the main thing was that the, the, the final episode that we had just shot the, of the six aired in like February 2020. Right. And the whole world stopped a month later. Like literally we just everything shut down because yeah. of covid and it was to be no more we didn't know 100 percent if we were going to be coming back but the other thing is i don't my, my co-stars didn't want to do it anymore they again it deviates so much from the original concept from the original idea that they didn't want to be they it wasn't the show that they wanted to film let's see so, let's know. see paul never got me on and i and i wouldn't bail on him Unfortunately, and this was this was a network note. Uh, there are too many middle-aged white guys on TV. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's true. Well, see, now I'm much older. Yeah. So yeah, I'm an old guy now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just had you know, there's an old guy running the country. That's not a good sign. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> we do that all the time here on this show. We do. Come uh, on, man, because we always forget what we're talking about. Come on, man. Come on, man. Well, Paul, I want to say thank you very much for your time. I truly do. You, I, I'm going to tell you something just from what I've seen from you and listened from you. Uh, number one, you, you're you're a tinkerer. You, you're in that garage, and you're moving around, man. Your mind is going a <laughs> mile a minute. I can see that in you. And you know what? That's fabulous that you still do stuff like that. Because I know we are all getting a little bit older, but you you seem like a very genuine uh, type of individual, and uh, I, I, I'm just amazed yeah. that 
you made the uh, the teddy bear, the the oh, teddy bear. ruxpin uh, ghost teddy ruxpin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was me, dude. That's amazing. That is amazing. So I want to say thank you very much. And Scotty, you have anything to say to your good friend here? No, Matt, I love you, and say I say hi to your better half for me. Oh, of course. I miss you guys so much. <laughs> All right, we'll, and ladies, we'll, we'll get together soon. I'm sure. Okay. Sounds and good. Ladies, and ladies and gentlemen, just like always, boo. Thank you for listening to the Paranormal Guys podcast, a Graveside Paranormal production. And as always, boo.